Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter 4 talking about performance testing task and continuing ahead with 4.2 that is analysis in design and implementation. As a part of this topic, we are breaking this down into simpler forms and looking into the last topic of this segment that is 4.2.8 finally preparing for performance test execution. Of course, we do understand that when it comes to the test implementation in general, it does mean that getting ready for executions or preparing to run your test. Now, of course, before that, there are a lot many things to set up and initialize before you can actually say that, are you ready to get started with execution? But finally, here we are talking about to make a final check and make sure that there are certain activities which are supposed to be performed before you can kick off with your execution activity. Now that's where preparing for the performance test execution deals with those, those set of actions which need to be performed in order to be sure that are we ready for execution or not. The main activities for preparing to execute the performance test includes setting up the test system under test, that is the application which you'll be interacting with, deploying the environment where you'll be running that, and of course setting up the load generations and monitoring tools, and making sure that all the necessary information will be collected. Now, of course, these are all the critical set of actions to need to be uh, deployed at this point of time before you get started with execution. Number one, the application has to be there. If the application does not uh, wake up or does not go up, then of course you cannot do anything while just running the performance test. The environment plays a vital role, which can includes a lot many other factors like the resources and the kind of environment including the operating system, the browsers and lot many other things which might be required in order to have the right setup being done in order to run the test. And of course, the load generation is pretty important. If you're not able to generate the required load, you may not be having the appropriate results and the result heavily depends on the monitoring matrices and as far as your matrices are in place, then you can definitely have the desired output what you may be looking for at any point of time. So it is important to ensure that environment is as close to the production environment so that you get really good appropriate results. If this is not possible, then there must be a clear understanding of the differences and how the test result will be projected on the production environment. So you may talk about scaling your environment and understanding that up to what percentage your environment was close to the production and the ratios can be taken accordingly. Now, ideally, the true production environment and the data will be used, but testing in a scaled down environment still may help mitigate a number of performance risks. So that's not a compromise, but sometimes you may not be able to lead to the real time environment or the production environment. In that case, you can definitely mock up your environment as close as possible by following your scale down approach and but make sure that you do consider all the factor from the point of meeting the expectations. And of course, in the lower environment as well, you can definitely reduce a lot of performance risk. It is really important to remember that performance is a non-linear function of the environment. So the further the environment is from production uh, standards, the more difficult it becomes to make accurate projections for the production performance. So. Of course, it does not really mean that you can just have a very low scale environment compared to the production one because that would be really difficult to estimate that what could be the real behavior when it moves into the production. So try to be as close as possible and uh, meet those desired guidelines which you need to have for the environment parameters in order to meet the production environment. Though you're trying to scale down, but it should not be something which is quite low or quite different from the one which you are expecting. So the lack of reliability of these projections and the increased level of risk grow as the test system looks like less like the production. And estimation of these projections would definitely be difficult. What results you may be getting is just because you have a lower set of environment and that would be you know, giving you the appropriate outcomes. But maybe in the real time, everything fails. So you don't want to be a victim of that. 
If data is generated or altered during the test, it may be necessary to restore the original data before the next test cycle to ensure that the system is in the proper state. I think that's a golden rule of automation that where do you start your script, you end at the same point so that your application is in the right state where you want it to start. And in case there are things which are involved with your execution, which may create or alter the data from the application or maybe during the execution, the test data which you're using, if it has been updated due to some reason based on your activities, then make sure that these things are restored to the initial state before you run the next test. Because if you forget to do that, then your outcomes may slightly be different compared to what you're expecting. And you would be thinking that what went wrong. So if some part of the system or some part of data is unavailable for any reasons, for a performance test, for whatever reason, a workaround should be implemented. That what should be the temporary solution to that so that you can run the test. It's not acting like a blocker to you. So just making sure that everything is well established, well available before you can hit the executions of the performance test and be ready for what you are going to C as an experience. Coming up to the next, there are many ways to deploy environments. Of course, uh, when it comes to deploying the environment, we have to talk about what, what, what could be the possible ways to do it. For example, options may include using one of the following or any of these following, like traditional internal and external test labs. You may have internal within your premises or you can have a different outsourced premises or something. Cloud as an environment using infrastructure as a service uh, when some parts of the system or all of the system is deployed to the cloud. So generally a lot of people do cater you with a cloud uh, lab and that cloud lab can be you know utilized for configuring your infrastructure or the environment required to run the test. So if in case you cannot afford everything right within your premises or having an in-premise lab, you can always opt for IASS that is, which is infrastructure as a service, which you can take on rent or probably just, you know, go ahead and utilize that and make necessary payments for that and have the desired outcomes, whichever is required. Cloud as an environment using software as a service. Sometimes the software as a service can also be a platform for you to run these plan uh, executions and these when vendor provide the load testing services as well. So they do provide uh, certain tools being configured so that you just have to import your tests and start running them. You don't really have to worry about configuring everything right from the scratch or do have to worry about the tool which will be applying the load on the scenario. So a lot of things can be taken care of as software as a service, not just infrastructure. The software which you need to apply the load, like Load Runner and other tools which you want to use, they can also be a part of this which you can use and utilize. Now further, depending on the specific goals and the system to test, one test environment may be preferred over another. For example, to test the effect of performance improvement, which is performance optimization, using an isolated lab environment may be a better option to see even small variations introduced by the change. Now having that independency between the environments can give you real outcomes to what exactly could be the difference if I try with one infrastructure or probably one environment compared to other one. So you just don't try to reconfigure your existing parameters rather than uh, you look forward to opt for another environment and say that, okay, let us try on this and see what could be the possible outcome of that. And that could definitely come up with a difference between the execution. Also to load test the whole production environment end to end to make sure the system will handle the load without any major issues, testing from the cloud or a service may be more appropriate. For example, note that this only works for the SET that can be reached from a cloud. So these are like specific to the cloud-based applications which you may be trying on. So that could be more appropriate in terms of handling load without any issues because generally your applications which expect huge load are hosted in clouds rather than having a physical presence on certain servers. The other thing here is to minimize the cost when performance testing is limited in time. Creating a test environment in the cloud may be more economical solution because having it in premises could definitely cost you a lot and could increase your infrastructure cost to run that. So we want to make sure that everything is well established 
and uh, also taking care of the budget you have to do that job so call cloud based environments could be come much cheaper compared to having it in premises so that was to talk about how to prepare for performance test executions and what factors to take care of when running the same so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning